time or talk a little bit about uh, the athletic issue, I think that would be greatly appreciated. Chancellor? Sure. Um, thank you. Uh, President Reese, uh, uh, Vice President UN, welcome to your new roles. Uh, colleagues, uh, community, and other trustees. Um, thank you, everyone who spoke and uh, all the comments that have come forward regarding um, what we're doing now and what uh, the, the folks are anticipating regarding the safety uh, direction. I just have a few things to say regarding the COVID-19 uh, situation that we find ourselves facing at this moment. Uh, just let me tell you that um, at this moment, there are 38,218 confirmed cases. Uh, we had an additional 2,033 today in Alameda County, and we had 546 deaths from COVID, and four of them occurred today. Um, Alameda County um, is uh, a little unique in terms of the zip codes that are represented and the number of uh, deaths and infections are impacting Alameda County in a more dramatic way than other counties, sorry, other zip codes within our counties. So I'm just gonna take a moment here and let you know a few things. And one of them is I'd like to let you know is that I was at a business establishment the other day that had a sign posted that if you contract COVID while you're here, this company is not responsible, neither is its employees or contractors. You will continue here at your own risk. Because what we're seeing now is an increase in the possibility of legal repercussions from people contracting COVID. So we're in a changing situation and we're responding to those changes daily. We have seen this double digit, double factor increases of uh, deaths and uh, infections day by day since that Thanksgiving. So, you know, I really wanna take a moment and remember that there are many, many people who have already died of COVID uh, in our service area and to remember those who are sick, shut in, children who can't go outside or go to school and play, uh, our healthcare workers who are dealing with this pandemic and let's you know thank them for their compassion and wisdom. We are seeing a vaccine on the way, but it's not here yet and it can't be produced fast enough to keep up with the demand. Um, we know that there are many people who are out of work, without food, without shelter, and without hope due to COVID. So COVID-19 is deadly and it's impacting Blacks and Latinos and people in the ethnic categories within our service area, particularly those who are between 18 and 35 years old. They are now at the highest risk. Here in our district, we have had five students who have been uh, tested positive on our campuses, one who has been directly exposed and tested and waiting for results. Another student has been turned away from the lab at Laney because his questionnaire revealed that he lives in a COVID positive household and his status was unknown. He was referred to another clinic for testing. There have been six known cases so far of employees who have been on campus with additional cases among employees who have not been to a campus or an office. By zip code, we have a higher case rate than our neighboring districts. While the stay-at-home order indicates some limited in-person instruction is permissible for colleges and universities, there are multiple indicators that the increase of COVID cases in our area and a severe decrease in the availability of hospital beds and resources to handle those cases. These cases are growing and they're not going to go down. We're expecting them to go up over the winter holidays. The announcement was made in consultation with our supervising physician for the district who endorsed the decision for the safety of students, faculty, staff, and their families and their loved ones. 
we chose the term, quote, pause intentionally, as the intent was not a cancellation of CE or sports programs. The intent was to pause the programs until it is safe for all to proceed. And I promise you that we are continuing to review ways to safely move forward and we'll reconsider the situation on a day by day uh, frequency and until the stay at home order is revised or lifted. Additionally, administrators have been working with the athletics directors and the CE faculty to see what we can do. We're working on ways we can accommodate uh, instruction with embedded tutors and ways we can help student athletes in finding different alternatives and media to show their skills to recruiters uh, and to others that might be interested in seeing how they can move forward in their careers uh, within a sports frame. So we are hoping to develop some of those very soon. So um, to keep our students, uh, athletes engaged, we agreed that when the county permits and if, districts, if the district authorizes the return to campus, conditioning would resume for all sports under their protocols. Moreover, there is a mandatory response to the CCCAA due on the 18th of this month for competitions for spring 2021. While we recommend opting in for this uh, first part of the spring, the January to April season, we do this knowing that because of the need to uh, uh, be competitive, we can, and that these can only take place after a certain amount of conditioning, we will go ahead and let them know that we are moving forward. However, we reserve the right if we need to, to make a different decision and go in a different direction. We also have to be mindful of whether or not the county is going to allow us to do this. So our neighboring districts are taking the same approach of opting in now to meet the December 18th deadline and reserving the right to change the course in January if it's necessary. So we are, we are not uh, unaware of what needs to be done. And we are taking every precaution to make sure that we keep our faculty, staff, students, their families and loved ones safe as we respond to the governor's order to stay at home during this time. I'd like to uh, express my appreciation for our staff, faculty, administrators and trustees and to let everyone know that we are working on a return to campus protocol um, and we're at the moment, endeavoring to keep the district operating and moving forward. And you know, we're working as if we're in quote, normal times. And we're also looking for ways to innovate and bring resources to our community and students while working remotely. Some of us work without printers or without office arrangements. And instead we sit at kitchen tables while our kids attend school online or we care for family members. Many of us work on laptops no bigger than 10 by seven inches and produce documents and spreadsheets, presentations, all manner of forms, process payroll, write letters, write reports for the uh, ACCJC, complete state and federal compliance reports while we're understaffed. Some of us have taken on the tasks of two or three employees as our, our colleagues are overstressed, overtapped. So I want us all to remember that we are not in a normal situation. We are doing our absolute best to keep everyone safe as much as possible and to help our students, our faculty and our staffs, staff be successful. And I really wanna thank everyone for their commitment. So as we enter into the holiday break, I want you to know that I appreciate what you do. I appreciate our students. I appreciate how all of us strive on behalf of our students. And I wish everyone here uh, and all of the people that you are representing a most restful, safe and celebratory season as you can possibly have. And then the spirit of human interaction in COVID, here's an elbow bump this bump right to you. So thank you so much. 
Thank you, Chancellor, for that. And we look forward to seeing the protocol and the back to campus plan and protocol that you will be bringing forth um, at a later date. And I already, I think I kind of introduced your Chancellor's report. So officially, um, let us go to your Chancellor's report. Well, I think that was pretty much it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, anything else uh, that we, we need to cover there? President's reports, nothing, we're good? I think we're good, thank you. Okay. Fabulous. Um, then let us move on to the consent calendar.